Broken minds can be healed just the way broken bones and broken hearts are healed. While God is at work making those repairs, the rest of us can help by being merciful, non-judgmental, and kind. I wish to speak to those who suffer from some form of mental illness. However bewildering this all may be, these afflictions are some of the realities of mortal life, and there should be no more shame in acknowledging them than acknowledging a battle with high blood pressure or the sudden appearance of a malignant tumor. In striving for some peace and understanding in these difficult matters, it's crucial to remember that we are living and chose to live in a fallen world where, for divine purposes, our pursuit of godliness will be tested and tried again and again. Of greatest assurance in such a plan is that a Savior was promised, a Redeemer, who through our faith in Him would lift us triumphantly over those tests and trials, even though the cost to do so would be unfathomable for both the Father who sent Him and the Son who came. So how do you best respond when mental or emotional challenges confront you or those you love? Above all, never lose faith in your Father in heaven, who loves you more than you can comprehend. That love never changes. It is there for you when you are sad or happy, discouraged or hopeful. God's love is there for you whether or not you deserve it. It is simply always there. Never ever doubt that and never harden your heart. Faithfully pursue the time-tested devotional practices that bring the Spirit of the Lord into your life. Seek the counsel of those who hold keys for your spiritual well-being. Ask for and cherish priesthood blessings. Take the sacrament every week and hold fast to the perfecting promises of the Atonement of Jesus Christ. Believe in miracles. I have seen so many. They came when every indication would say that hope was lost. Hope is never lost. If those miracles do not come soon or fully or seemingly at all, remember the Savior's own anguished example. If the bitter cup does not pass, drink it and be strong, trusting in happier days ahead. In preventing illness whenever possible, watch for the stress indicators in yourself and in others you may be able to help. As with your automobile, be alert to rising temperatures, excessive speed, or a tank low on fuel. When you face depletion depression, make the requisite adjustments. Fatigue is the common enemy of us all. So slow down, rest up, replenish and refill. Physicians promise us that if we do not take time to be well, we most assuredly will take time later on. To be ill. If things continue to be debilitating, seek the advice of reputable people with certified training, professional skills, and good values. Be honest with them about your history and your struggles. Prayerfully and responsibly consider the counsel they give and the solutions they prescribe. If you had appendicitis, God would expect you to seek a priesthood blessing and get the best medical care available. So too with emotional disorders. Our Father in Heaven expects us to use all the marvelous gifts He has provided in this glorious dispensation. If you're the one afflicted or a caregiver to such, try not to be overwhelmed with the size of your task. Don't assume you can fix everything, but fix what you can. If those are only small victories, be grateful for them and be patient. Dozens of times in the scriptures, the Lord commands someone to stand still or be still 
and wait. Patiently enduring some things is part of our mortal education. Let us remember that through any illness or difficult challenge, there is still much in life to be hopeful about and grateful for. We are infinitely more than our limitations or our afflictions. Whatever your struggle, my brothers and sisters, mental or emotional or physical or otherwise, do not vote against the preciousness of life by ending it. Trust in God. Hold on in His love. Know that one day the dawn will break brightly and all shadows of mortality will flee. Though we may feel we are like a broken vessel, as the psalmist says, we must remember that vessel is in the hands of the divine potter. Broken minds can be healed just the way broken bones and broken hearts are healed. While God is at work making those repairs, the rest of us can help by being merciful, non-judgmental, and kind. I testify of the Holy Resurrection, that unspeakable cornerstone gift in the atonement of the Lord Jesus Christ. With the Apostle Paul, I testify that that which was sown in corruption will one day be raised in incorruption, and that which was sown in weakness will ultimately be raised in power. I bear witness of that day when loved ones whom we knew to have disabilities in mortality will stand before us glorified and grand, breathtakingly perfect in body and mind. What a thrilling moment that will be. I do not know whether we will be happier for ourselves that we have witnessed such a miracle or happier for them that they are fully perfect and finally free at last. Until that hour when Christ's consummate gift is evident to us all, May we live by faith, hold fast to hope, and show compassion one of another. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.